Uh, Lokesh will talk about the uh, the cloud. So, without much ado, Lokesh Pedewaka. Thanks, Ming, for the uh, for introduction. As always, yes, it's been three years. Uh, uh, Ming was my mentor in my B sides proving ground, uh, B sides talk, and it was uh, my opportunity to meet with him, learn from him. Um, all right, so thank you so much for coming uh, for my talk. Uh, it is on an OSINT approach to third-party cloud service provider evaluation. Uh, something that we are going to discuss in the next 20 odd minutes uh, will start with traditional ways how companies assess third-party cloud providers. I'll go over the challenges what people face when they evaluate uh, providers, how we can overcome these challenges using OSINT tools, uh, where am I currently with this, and how I see a future with this solution. All right, so before we begin, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, I do cloud and application security for Cisco. Uh, thanks, Cisco, for sponsoring the trip. Uh, um, I'm a returning speaker at Packet Hacking Village. Uh, a big thanks to Packet Hacking Village and Wall of Sheep uh, for um, organizing uh, the talks and uh, accepting me. So that's pretty much. Uh, before we move on uh, to the talk, let's get the obligatory disclaimer aside. Um, I will be talking about few tools, uh, resources throughout the presentation, uh, but uh, those are not my endorsements. None of these things are something that I'm, uh, I, I get paid to put those things. Um, and. Uh, if you want to use any of these providers, first of all, please use common sense. And then refer to your corporate policies if you have some uh, in terms of how you can use these providers or solutions in your corporate settings. All right, so as the disclaimer is set aside, let's move on. Third-party cloud provider ecosystem. So a quick uh, round of uh, hands, you know, how many of you work in an enterprise that uses a third-party cloud service for anything? Most of us, because even uh, my enterprises that I have worked in the past, now everyone uses third-party cloud services. Uh, and these cloud providers are not doing something like uh, a marketing kind of a thing or a sales, which is not that critical. Nowadays, enterprises are embracing these providers to do business critical operations like CRM, mails, storage, dogs, cats, everything. So uh, it's, it's, it's a critical thing um, in, in, in any enterprise setting, and it becomes even more critical how those enterprises are evaluating these providers. As you see, a lot of sensitive information is going into those cloud providers. So it, it's a requirement to assess these cloud providers to make sure that data that they are going to store is kept securely. You know, new regulations are coming along, which says you, know, you should know how you are protecting the data and everything. So that's how this assessment is important. Now, what do you think? Uh, what will be the common way to assess cloud providers? Any guesses? That's one good thing. Um, Excel sheets is something that are still predominant in evaluating providers. And uh, I was just browsing my timeline, and uh, Jeremiah Grossman, he uh, tweeted this thing. And I was like, yeah, this is something that uh, I have to use, because uh, not only in asset management, um, for several um, enterprise operations, we are still relying on Excel sheets. And cloud assessment is no different. Uh, but there are other tools that people use generally to evaluate cloud providers. Uh, Excel sheets, number one, Word documents. Um, some people like to chat, it over, uh, chat about their cloud providers during, uh, over drinks or coffee. So that's a cool way. Or they just see if, if you have gone through a SOC 2 audit, share your audit report, and we are good to go. Uh, get the assessment done, and then you are set for the life. Um, some people who are more smart, uh, who have matured the process, they have developed inter internal tools for the whole process. Uh, and there are a few people who are into the cloud inception world, where they use third-party cloud providers to evaluate third-party cloud services. So good luck. Um, regardless of the tool that you are using, 
the process remains same. So it starts with sending questionnaire, and then um, the provider is filling out long questions. Uh, as a security team, you will be evaluating those questions based on your policies, uh, and iterating over their responses, requirements, sharing with them, oh, fix this thing, or there's something that we don't want. Do this, do that. And once they'll satisfy all your requirements, you move on and approve them for life. Uh, as you see, this is a cyclic process, so everything just goes on and on for all providers. But at the same time, this is a long process. You know, I can imagine five things doing for individual providers where um, large enterprises can use uh, hundreds of providers. It's a tedious, long process. Now, in those process, in those process questions, there are different categories. So now we are going one level deep. Like, what kind of things do you ask? Mostly these providers are grilled on application security. I'm going to use your application. Can you prove your application is secure? Can you tell me how will I log in? Or will you store my passwords in plain text? MD5, SHA-1, um, encryption, no encryption. Uh, do you scan your infrastructure? Do you do any security operations? How do you store logs, monitoring, incident response, everything? So these are typical questions, um, and typical categories. And if you will uh, go to uh, Cloud Security Alliance's site, CAIQ, you'll find detailed questions around these categories. Now, this is a very important slide, because if we want to devise a solution to assess our providers, we have to follow these categories. We have to think that how I can get answers that can fit into one or more categories, and still I don't have to knock on the doors of the provider. So that's the basis of uh, my approach. OK, so in current approach in the questionnaire world, there are challenges. And we discussed few like it's a long process. It's time consuming, but at the same time, it's also point in time. So what happens if I ask one provider today, they are going to give me an answer, OK, I use TLS 1.2. Tomorrow, it might change. So we are relying on an information that we are getting at a, a, a single frame of time. So that's the biggest problem. The other problems in this current process is it's inconsistent. Some people ask 10 questions. Some people ask 150 questions. So it's inconsistent. And then when we get responses, we are relying on the face value of the responses. You know, My provider uh, shared this information with a smile, uh, so I trust him. Or uh, they shared a SOC2 report certified by some consultancy. Yes, I trust that uh, consultant, so I am trusting this SOC report. So a lot of things are high trust model. You know, There are no real ways to validate and verify these resources. So that's, these are a few challenges that I see uh, in the current process. Uh, and I have evaluated more than 100 providers till now. So that's the problem. When I uh, saw these problems and uh, doing more, more, more and more effort to find out um, the security, the, the acceptable level of security, I thought there, there should be something else. So, pen testers and other security researchers, everyone uses OSINT. Why can't we use open source intelligence to find out information about our providers? And then use that solution, use that information to fill these questions so that we are asking less questions and these are very direct. So that's how this whole uh, concept, the whole approach started. Now, what is this approach? How we architect this solution? In order to architect the solution, first, we need to identify the resources. Various level of information can be collected through these resources, but there will be various degrees of accuracy and impact. Some resources are very accurate, like um, if you do SSL scan on a specific URL, you might get a good level of information in terms of what kind of protocols they support, what kind of cipher suites they support, uh, if they are vulnerable to any known uh, SSL level attack. Whereas if you are looking for information from um, vulners or um, open bug bounty, 
it might be a chance where uh, the vulnerability was there, but now it is patched. So that's where the impact and accuracy comes. The third uh, criteria is, can we get some information from the provider and then take that information and correlate, correlate other things? So that's the third piece that I have used in terms of architecting the solution. Uh, once you get to this, you will find, uh, uh, this is a prototype um, uh, dashboard that uh, I have designed where um, you'll have the cloud providers. So if you see uh, 100 providers in your enterprise, you'll have a list of those providers and then various degrees of um, uh, their maturity in terms of these tools. Now, as all tools are not made similar, uh, we have to develop a weighted solution, a weighted model, where we are giving uh, scores to SSL or umbrella or security headers, and then based on those weighted scores, we are calculating just to have a parity across the board. If you see, we are also bringing IAS, like which infrastructure they are based on. If they are based on an infrastructure provider that we trust more, we have seen more, then their overall health will be greater than a provider which we don't know, or if they are just hosting the service in the back of the office under uh, developer's uh, desk. So that's another differentiator. Overall, we'll be able to come to a score where it will be A, B plus, A minus, whichever way we want to model it. So that's how um, the dashboard will look like. Now, the, the soul of the solution are the, is, is the resource, the open source resources available on internet that can be used for um, designing the solution. So as you see in, in the world, everything, there are a few things that are free, few things which are paid. So let's start with the free resources. In terms of free resources, again, I'm categorizing it based on the previous questionnaire category. You know, remember those that slide. So we have to identify resources that can fit into one or more categories. Uh, for example, if um, data security is considered, data, at, um, data in transit communication is important. So that's where SSL scan, HT bridge, HTTP observatory, those kind of resources can be used. Whereas um, if you are looking into application security, uh, then um, tools uh, or like resources that can give information about vulnerabilities on their web application, on their mobile application will be important. Uh, so again, raise of hand, um, how many of you use mobile application from, their, from your third party providers? Uh, most of us, again. So that's where I'll take the example, like how we can differentiate between a free resource, paid resource, and what kind of information is important to grab. So let's take an example where um, we are going to get uh, a third party provider and their mobile app uh, will be given to us for use, uh, you know, for communication, communication, chat, or any other thing. So in that case, if you look at the free resource, I've listed HT Bridge. So what this tool does, uh, you feed the APK file, it will tell you the information about the APK, whether it has hard-coded secrets, whether uh, it has high-risk, medium-risk findings. Now, if you were just using that provider directly and evaluating their um, company posture, you might miss this information. That's where the beauty of tool will come. Uh, you can drill down into what is the exact issue. So password, like they have a hard-coded password. And then these can be used to have further discussion with the provider. Oh, you said that you don't do uh, these things, but we have found something. Uh, same thing uh, can be done on a commercial tool level. So there are various degrees of uh, information and services that we can go get through commercial tools. And again, I, am, I have listed only few tools here just for the sake of uh, uh, the slide. Uh, there are more resources that I have in my list. Uh, uh, but the good thing about these commercial tools is they have, most of them have extensibility. So what will happen, you will be able to extend the information collected by, uh, from that tool to a different dashboard, to a dashboard, so API. An example is API. Most of these tools will have an API that can be extended to a dashboard for correlation. Whereas in the free resource, it might be available, it might not be available. The other thing will be service. Again, you might not get support from the provider. So 
Continuing the example that we took um, uh, for the free resource, again, you are using a mobile app from your provider. Um, is there any commercial resource? So you can use something called as NowSecure Intel. That's a commercial resource um, that you can feed the APK and IPA files, and uh, it will it will share the result in terms of the score. It can also give more information in terms of like uh, you know uh, compliance. There are different uh, compliance standards. How your app works on those, uh, uh, how your app is rated around those compliance standards. The other thing will be you'll be able to get a version detail. So like previous version has this vulnerability, but uh, newer version does not have this vulnerability. And then the future version, uh, you, you might look for that particular thing. Uh, feel free to grab um, uh, a free um, a report uh, using the bit.ly link. OK, so now that we have set the premise, uh, we have understood uh, the architecture of the solution. Let's discuss what are the advantages of uh, this approach. First, uh, the challenges. The challenges that, that we faced during our questionnaire-based process, some of those challenges can be overcome through this process, where we'll have a continuous tab on uh, the cloud providers. Every, uh, every day or every week, we can just configure that how, how, how is the periodicity. Then. It can be used, this information can be used to make decisions. So maybe you want to put that provider uh, for only few employees because the provider's health is not better or uh, to, to that level that is acceptable for you. Uh, it can be used to make decisions like partnerships, acquisitions. Uh, it can also uh, be used for consistency. So if you are a cloud provider, then you can use this approach to uh, design your solution and understand the security from an outsider's view. So uh, you'll have a consistency around um, your product and the products that you are using. Uh, as with other uh, OSINT tools, it also comes with the same uh, drawbacks. Uh, noise, false positives um, is one of the problem. But that's where uh, the, uh, the mod model will come, where we'll, we'll rate individual resources, whether this is accurate or we can trust or not. Also, these resources change. Uh, to, uh, like the resources that I had a uh, couple of years back, now no longer they don't have enough information. So that's another problem. Uh, other problem with this approach is uh, it cannot satisfy all the questions. So it's limited information. It's very specific to certain things. But it will not be able to give me more information. So I can get their privacy policy, but I might not be able to get to their patching policy. The last thing is enterprises have to decide whether they have to invest resources uh, and build the solution around the free tools, or they have to buy a solution and extend it to a different dashboard. So that's uh, another um, problem. OK, so coming to the present day uh, status of the solution, currently I have, uh, I'm doing modeling and prototyping of the dashboard where I'm rating individual resources with uh, their accurate results. Uh, I'm categorizing those resources. What I need from all of you, if you can, if you have ideas to improve this process, or if you can help me realize the solution, please feel free to hit me up on Twitter. I would love to hear your ideas and would love to have helping hands in realizing the solution. Uh, finally, uh, let me summarize uh, the things that we discussed in the last 15 minutes. Uh, all of us agree that Today's enterprise, today's mo modern enterprise is using a lot of cloud providers. And uh, security practitioners, engineers will not be able to keep up with the speed of business. Like, I want to use this provider tomorrow. Can you just tell me if it is secure or not? Uh, I don't know. It will take some time. So we will need to find out some solution that can give us quick result. That's where the value of the proposed solution will come. And then, if the thing that I'm thinking, uh, and then if we can integrate this thing with our current process, it will expedite uh, process. Maybe you will you are taking six months. It will st you are, you are, you'll start taking 15 days. Finally, for the future, you know where I think this solution um, will go, where we'll have a common platform uh, to share the information of various cloud providers. We can bring most of the cloud services to an acceptable level through sharing this information. 
and maybe that tool will be exposed over APIs. People can integrate that tool with their individual processes and make decisions. So that's where um, I'm hoping for the future. All right, so that's pretty much uh, what I had to say. Any questions? Yes. So how do we um, get the list of all of the free and paid for services? Just hit you up on Twitter or? Is yes, so I am going to publish it. I was waiting for this talk. I'll publish it on my GitHub, uh, the list of uh, tools that I have uh, categorized uh, with the information that we can get and mapping uh, to the category of questions. Okay, all right, thank you. Yeah, and you can request a PR and contribute more resources. Okay. Yes. Yes. Some part. So uh, there are few resources that were easy uh, in terms of APIs. So what we did, um, we wrote a quick Python script to get information about those vendors and using it for our current questionnaire-based assessment. Yes, sir. Have you looked at any design patterns for architecture in cloud services and how those represent specific kinds of risk that should be quantified via this method? Uh, yes. it's. Uh, we, have, we see a lot of architecture because every cloud provider, we ask the same question, share your architecture diagram. Mm -hmm. uh, most of them, if uh, they are using, uh, for example, AWS, the pattern is uh, they are using free resources or just going, if it's a small provider, they are just using EC2s. They are not considering VPCs. But if it is a provider that uh, has a security culture and an affinity to security, they are trying to do CIS benchmark. So some providers are doing CIS, some are not. So let me try and clarify. So for example, if I'm in AWS and I have a client who's doing Lambda, that profile would look fundamentally different than if I was doing IAS. Yes, it will look different. Uh, um, I see good and bad things both in uh, this because some of the providers who were on AWS, but then recently when we started re-reviewing them, they moved out and they shared few good resources around why they moved out. So I can share some details maybe afterwards. Thanks. All right. All right. All right. Go catch everyone.